Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the game between the Sharks and the Flames, in which the Sharks have lost 6-2. to two. Interestingly enough, the first two games against the Flames this season, the Sharks won by a score of 3-1 to one both times, and now the Flames have doubled up on that, winning 6-2, and so technically now... Both teams have the same amount of goals, an 8-8 eight and eight score against each other over this three games this season. Now, this game started off just completely awful. It, you take a look at that start against the Oilers just a few days ago, and that wasn't a great start, certainly, and they gave up those two goals just in the first few minutes. But it's, it looks like a Stanley Cup-level team compared to the first 10 minutes of this game. It was just so embarrassing to watch the Sharks. They seemed asleep at the wheel. They were doing absolutely nothing. They were watching the puck like a bunch of two-year-olds as the Flames basically looked like the Harlem Globetrotters passing this puck around like like, uh, you know, Wayne Gretzky's all on the ice. And they end up racking up three goals from three unlikely candidates here, Lucic, Reeder, and Ronaldo, to make it 3-0 Calgary just in the first 10 minutes. A disappointing showing from the Sharks. However, like we did see against the Oilers, the, the Sharks did manage to claw their way back into the game. They would get a goal from Eric Carlson before the end of the first period, and then would get a goal from Brent Burns in the second to make it 3-2, but that would be as close as the Sharks would get before Jankowski would make it 4-2 going in to the third period. Come third period, we would get the prime reason why the majority of hockey fans very much dislike Matthew Tkachuk, but also the reason why Flames fans love him. So it's Brendan Dillon who gets called for a tripping penalty on Tkachuk as a pretty apt considering the Oscars were yesterday. Tkachuk wins best actor by diving here on the ice to draw this penalty, but then he ends up scoring a beautiful goal to make it 5-2 Calgary. But by the way, they scored three power play goals in this game so that league best penalty kill not really showing up here tonight and not really been showing up in the past few games in fact eventually Mikhail Backlund would add, or Michael Backlund I should say would add a goal to make it 6-2 mostly just insurance if you could even call it that then the Sharks would lose so a couple wins in a row against two divisional opponents the Flames and the Oilers they come back here tonight once again against the Flames and they end up dropping this one so any sort of hope for maybe a potential playoff spot being there sort of dashed here tonight especially since with the Anaheim Ducks actually having been playing well in the past few games they've actually passed the Sharks and remained ahead of them with this Sharks lost the first thing to talk about would be Arundel as he ends up being in net for all six goals here tonight and normally when your goaltender lets in six goals it's certainly not a good sign and you don't have much nice things to say about them however it's hard to really fault Dell for this performance here tonight as I said those first three goals just you have to put so much of the blame onto the actual Sharks forwards and defensemen who just looked so lost in the first 10 minutes and in fact it could have maybe even been 5-0 that's how many great chances the Shark or the Flames had during that time period so the three goals isn't good for Dell to let up but it's hard to put too much blame and then you take a look at the next three the Jankowski one was a pretty unlucky bounce as I said the Kachuk one was just a beautiful move and then he didn't have much of a chance on the backland one either so in the end I do suspect that for the next game Martin Jones will get the call but that's not necessarily a comment on how Dell performed in this game tonight but more just the fact that Dell has gotten the last few starts and if there were a time where you're going to want to get Jones back in there since you know Dell isn't going to start the last 26 games of the season still this would likely be that time especially with a few days off it could be good to get Jones back in there since his most recent performance was that one against the Canucks, which was not great after that third period collapse. Next, to talk about Radim Shemek, I mentioned him as having a not-so-great game against the Oilers, and that was the case here tonight. He was one of the most egregious players who was very bad in that first 10 minutes, but he never really recovered along with his partner Ferraro. Now, the reason I'm mentioning Shemek in particular is that when it comes to the San Jose Sharks this season... There isn't really anything to be excited about when they lose since they have no first round pick and it's hard to get all too excited when the Sharks are winning here in this last stretch of the season just because of how far off the potential playoff spot is for the Sharks. And so it's hard to really invest so much into these games so the things that you do have to cling on to are maybe 
going are uh, things that could affect the Sharks going into the following season. And Shemek is one of those because Shemek's contract is up by the end of this year and he will have to be re-signed. Now we saw a player take a similar projector uh, projection as Shemek has taken Joachim Ryan, though not as extreme. Ryan was very good in his first season playing with Brent Burns, but then came back just this past year and was mostly awful for the entire year. And now has ended up in Los Angeles. I don't even know if he's a consistent player there. Shemek has actually done something similar where last season he replaced Ryan with Brent Burns. He was very, very good for almost every single game he played. He unfortunately got injured, however, near the end of the season and he's come back this season and he has had a few good games in fact at the start when he first returned from injury he strung together a pretty a few pretty good games but he's been very up and down and there has been a few downs that have been quite bad he lost his spot playing with Brent Burns and now finds himself on the third pairing with a bit of a reduced role so it has been a bit of a dis- disappointing season for Shemek and it'll be interesting to see the type of contract he gets because while you don't want to see a player do poorly It could potentially still work in the Sharks' favor, considering they might be able to give him a bit of a cheaper deal. And finally, I'll talk about Brent Burns here tonight. He had some nice offensive plays. He, of course, scored a goal. But as I said with Shemek, I talked about Shemek's contract. And I'll talk about Brent Burns in terms of a potential trade target. There have been a lot of rumors surrounding the Sharks, not just from, you know, Dylan, Carlson, Dell, but also some of the more mainstay players. You know, Thornton has been in the trade rumors. Marlowe has been in the trade rumors. And I've even been hearing, I know there's a lot of... uh, decently decently sized contingent of Sharks fans who want to move Brent Burns but there's also been some rumors that Brent Burns could potentially be on the move and honestly I'd actually be quite sad if Burns got traded obviously if the Sharks could get a big return like a maybe not Carlson level but close to Carlson level return for a player like Brent Burns I would do that you know a first a couple of solid prospects but it seems extremely unlikely that the Sharks can actually get any sort of return like that And so if Brent Burns isn't going to really bring back much, first of all, let's just forget the fact that Brent Burns is going to be such a difficult contract to move that I just really don't think it'll work out anyway. But if the Sharks aren't going to get a decent return for Brent Burns, I'd almost rather keep him. I realize his contract is quite difficult to work with. Five more years here, he's really getting up there in age. But I just feel like Brent Burns really embodies the San Jose Sharks. He's one of my favorite players on the team. It always seems like he's giving full effort night in, night out. He plays in literally every situation, even strength on the power play, shorthanded, you know, protecting a one goal lead in the last minute, trying to come back from a one goal deficit in the last minute, Brent Burns playing 25, sometimes even 30 minutes a night, he really does it all for the Sharks, he's a bona fide number one defenseman, and obviously he has his flaws, and those flaws have been on display more so this season than previous years, but still, I really like Brent Burns, and it would be somewhat sad to see him get traded, but again, I should clarify, it's going to be very difficult, even if Wilson wanted to, to actually move this contract. But that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Friday, another three-day break, oddly enough, in the schedule, pretty late in the season, in fact, and they will face off against the Winnipeg Jets, a team they have also played a couple of times this season. I believe this will be the final meeting against the Jets this year, and it has gone okay-ish, But we'll see how the Sharks can perform in that one. This is technically a team that they are chasing in the playoff race if you're still following that. So we'll see how it goes. Class dismissed.